Good morning, people. It's Sunday morning, May 3rd. It's, is that right, 7.58? Yeah. 7.58 a.m.? No, 6.50 Oh, that's right. Um, we're getting ready to go out to the shops. <laughs> um, I really detested grocery shopping before the apocalypse happened. And I really detest it now because it interrupts my morning coffee. <laughs> but if you hope to get most of the things on your list, you have to go early in the morning, at least where I live. Hey so. guys. Uh, well, after an early morning run to the grocery store, um, I decided to do something that's been on my mind for a couple of days and sort of has kept me awake. I have discovered over the years that there's just certain um, arts and crafts, st um, things and styles that I tried and I just don't care for and at some point that doesn't mean I need to keep the excess stuff around maybe I keep a little bit but I don't keep too much and then there's other things that I find I really enjoy but I get tired of digging the parts out of the closet over let's see where are we over there <sighs> you know fabric projects and slow stitching and embroidery are one of the ones I get tired of digging stuff out of the closet so I spent some time today at the Small Bits Bank behind me, um, which if you've seen my um, studio tour videos, you know what that's all about. If you haven't, I'll try to find the videos on it and link them below. Um, anyway, I spent some time cleaning out and purging some things, thinning out some things. I don't need to keep every single size of envelope on the planet. I really, really don't. I found four <laughs> you see four bags of stuff that have to go. Um, and I combined some other things, like I had one bag of envelope, uh, one bin of envelopes, one bin of tags, one bin of bags. That's a lot of envelopes, tags, and bags. I thinned them out enough to get them all into one bin. I did the same thing with a few other items that were on the small bits bank so that I could put out five bins of fabric. I have one bin now of just cottons, Let's see, let's turn around. Sorry, I don't mean to make you dizzy. So I have one bin here of um, cheesecloth and metallic fabrics and burlap and things with texture. I have a bin of vintage fabrics, denim, distressed fabrics. There's some silk in there. Um, my bin of cottons, which I don't have all the colors in the rainbow, but I did Roy G. Biv as close as I could get and some large pieces of fabric along with custom printed fabric with my artwork on it from Spoonflower in the back there. And then a bin of lace. And that's gonna make me very happy. I still have my two drawers on the other side of the camera. One has um, wool in it and um, things I use for the bases on some of the slow stitches. And then the other one has the smaller scraps that are sorted by color and they're in little bags and so anyway that took a bit today to do but I am very happy that I did it and this is going to make me very very happy and I'll be able to get some slow stitching done so now I just have to <laughs> figure out what I'm going to do with the excess that's not garbage and um yeah there's no place to donate anything right donate anything right now so the only thing I can do figure out to do is start a box or a bag and hang on to it until there is. I hate to just throw it away. So yeah, that's gonna be a thing. All right, it's I'll be much back. later in the afternoon and I was just re-watching my clip from earlier and I should say to you that I am able to um, lessen my inventory of envelopes and bags and tags. And Cause I, one of the things I've discovered over the years is I'm not a huge fan of junk journaling. Why, while I do do it now and then, um, it's not my favorite thing, and I do have a lot, a lot of junk journals that people have sent me, uh, dear friends have made for me, and um, I like using those when I need to use a junk journal, and if I want to make one, I do have just enough to make some stuff, um, but I don't, I don't need to have bins and bins and bins of, like, envelopes. Uh, it's just not necessary, so yeah, that's a thing. Um,
Hey guys, it's Monday afternoon. I don't think it's three o'clock yet, but it could be, I don't know. Anyway, it's after three o'clock, uh, I was wrong, and I thought I filmed this already, and I didn't have the button push. And then I went to go listen back to what I did film, and my phone was still connected to the Bluetooth speaker upstairs. <laughs> it's just, ay ay ay. you know, it's just, I'm calling it Corona brain. I've never been good at the date and day and time. Y'all know that if you've been watching my channel for a while. But, you know, lately it's things like this, or it's, did I wash my hair this morning? Did I take a shower? Ch I lose the English, the words for things, like, hello? <laughs> I, I lose the English. Uh, I, you know, I just, my, I'm not the only one that's doing it. My husband's doing it too. We're just, we're calling it Corona Brain. So, tear here, it says. Yeah. Resealable bag, it says. Bull pucky, I say. It is not opening. No. Foster Farms, you lie. Okay, so remember what I said earlier about Corona Brain? So Bob and I realized today at about one lunchtime, lunchtime. that there was a whole bunch of things we should have bought at the store yesterday. Um that we forgot about or things that we thought were we had that we didn't have yeah so we need to get steps in tonight so i guess we're doing it at the grocery store <clears throat> so he's got his head tube i've got my mask yeah so corona brain i'm blaming it on that anyway all right we'll be back good morning everybody have i checked in today i don't think i have my Corona hair is coming along nicely. <laughs> uh, my Corona brain is, yeah, also coming along nicely. Holy cow. Anyway, I was just watching the vlog for last week, and uh, which I have to do during the editing process which I hate watching myself on camera, FYI. Most, most creators I know do, like they, ha they hate having to go back and listen to themselves speak. I, I even Bailey, uh, Bumble Bailey, um, her other channel is Bailey J, I think. She's a much bigger channel than mine. Anyway, she mentioned it in a recent vlog that she really hates listening to herself talk. I re can really relate. Um, Anyway, that's done and it's um, saved and it's loading to YouTube and there's a spot on my sunglasses. Um, so that's all done and I had some lunch. It's just about noon, I think. Yeah, it's just, just before noon. I've had some lunch. I found out that someone very nicely sent me happy mail from Canada and I think that's the package that I just found out is there over at my over at my PO box which I have okay guys so um, as I told you I had some happy mail from Darlene and I don't usually um, do haul videos anymore on on camera here on the YouTube channel and I don't do lots of happy mail videos either I do of course thank the person and I am always very appreciative of whatever you all send me believe me and I do use it um, I just don't want to feel like I'm bragging because it's not me. But anyway, I did want to share this because she sent me a really great um, bundle of stuff and I wanted to share her work. Um, her So her name is Darlene and let's see, Bromberger. I don't know if she has a YouTube channel, but if she does, I'll link it below. I don't think she does actually. Um, she sent me a very sweet card with a sweet note in it. And I had a suspicion when I saw the front of the card, so I turned it over to look at the back and sure enough, she did the work on here and I don't know if you can all see that's not drawing that's paper embroidery on there how cool is that and then um she sent me a junk journal so I said recently on camera that um you know I felt okay about getting rid of some things and making way for more stitchery things because Although I do the occasional junk journal, it's just not my thing. And I just, I kind of always feel like you all do a way better job than I do just because I don't have the patience for it. So first of all, it was wrapped in this envelope. 
which is made out of a bag and some paper. How cool is that with a with a, a tie on it? I think it's a silk piece of silk yarn. And then here's the junk journal. How cute is that? And then it's got, I think this is a leaf from one of her trees in her yard. In Canada. She's from Canada. And then there's a pocket here in the front. How cute is he? And then there's something with a quote on it here. Oh, it just has her name, handcrafted by BB Creations. It's her art name, artist name. How cute is that with some um, distress papers? And then it's got some more pockets in the back and another like a bookmark. Most people who know, know I love to do art and I love to read. That's my two things. There's another one with some of her leaves on it. And then what are these here? Like all the pockets have something in it. It's so cool. Oh yeah, some pressed leaves and flowers. And then some images, maybe from her yard, I'm not sure. Maybe from a magazine. It's a perfect little journal and a good size to like fit in back into the envelope. And into my bag if we're ever allowed to go traveling again <laughs> you know to take with me somewhere to do some uh, botanical sketches in or some writing in it's a really great size for that and it's yeah it's nice and small fits in my travel art case really well so I love that thank you Darlene of course she knows because I've been sharing images and things over in a chat group that we're on on, fa in, on Facebook with some other people that I've been doing lots of slow stitching and at this point you all know too and I keep running out of um, embroidery floss colors so she sent me a bag of embroidery floss now I don't it's not DMC floss I'm kind of wondering if it's a Canadian brand let's see it says prism six strand floss I don't know it's from China but I've never seen the prism brand now that doesn't mean anything. They might have it at Joann's. I haven't bought embroidery floss in, for a long time until recently. And recently I just buy it online because you can't go in the shops. So I haven't done this much embroidery in a really long time. But she sent me a really nice big bag of floss, a bunch of great colors, which is wonderful because I'm running out of some things again. Um, she sent me this um, tag, laminated tag. It says... It's an Amur maple from her tree last fall, Amur, A-M-U-R. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but anyway, it looks similar to the other leaves, which made me think they were all from her tree. What else is here? Because I don't know. She sent me some elastic. Thank you, Darlene, because I'm, you know, running low again. So elastic is always great right now. I need to make some more masks. Um, she sent me this little, I don't know what that is. Looks like another journal. Handcrafted by BB Creations. Looks like another journal. Uh, matchbook style. Yep. It sure is. Matchbook style. That's cute. These are cute little um, quick journals to do, like on in a single day to do a um, uh, little mini uh, collage in. They're really great for that. Love that. I'm going to put her tag back in here. Let's see. She sent me, she made these. I know she's making these. So this is a variation on the headband that I make. This just, you can do the ear loops and then put this in the back from one ear to the other. So the elastic doesn't rub on the back of your ears. I actually am thinking about switching one or more of my bands to ear loops rather than head loops because the head loops get really tight. This might solve part of the problem. So thank you, Darlene. I will be using this the next time I go out, which... I've been out three times in as many days, so I'm kind of hoping I don't have to go out for a while, but when I do, I'll be using that. She sent me some buttons. I just went through and cleaned out a bunch of my buttons and I'm using them. There's some cool ones in here. You can just never have too many buttons, can you, when you're doing stitching and stuff? I shouldn't say that, I guess you could. But there are some cool buttons in here. Looks like they're all plastic buttons. 
but there's some great colors, like ocean theme colors. Sorry, I'll show you guys on camera rather than staring at the buttons. So I'll have to, I do have my buttons now separated by color. I know. So I'll have to spend some time sorting them out. There's one sparkly one. See that? I love that. So cool. Okay, she sent me some, there's notes on everything. So this says ice dyed cheesecloth and old arm sling. I don't know what ice dyeing is, but the look of this fabric has me intrigued, Darlene. So, I can see stitching with this and adding it to some of my stitching. Look at this piece. This is cheesecloth, it's just, it's all folded up, but it's a big, pretty big piece. And then we have, she sent me a few different colors. So we have this one. Orange, you know, fun fact, I don't have enough orange or yellow. She sent me two different oranges. One is a little brighter. This one is more of a, a gold orange. I don't know, have enough orange or yellow, fun fact. And look at this pretty green. Those will go with the fabrics I have that are separated out by color. I know, I, I know. Stop shaking your head, I'm aware. All right, she sent me some little mini bags which is great. I When I was cleaning out my bag bin, I got rid of a lot of the bigger bags because I just don't use them, but I do use the mini ones because I use them for pockets and stuff like that. So these are great. And then these, show me this. These kind of look like the elastic loops or knitted loops that you do weaving with. I haven't opened it yet, but let's look. No, nope, it looks like string. I'm intrigued. It's not stretchy. I mean, what is this? It's very cool. It's a little piece of a dark red color. There's a bunch of blue and some white. What is this, Darlene? I'm intrigued. I wonder if I could stitch with it. I wonder what kind of French knot you'd get. Same. I'm going, and then she had some vintage fabric in her stash. It is so cute. She said she made herself a neck wrap. Neck, hold on. What did she make? A neck band. Um, and she says it turned out so darn cute. Well, I get, the fabric is adorable. So this is some vintage fabric covered in, in bees. Look at this. That's gonna be fun to use on a slow stitch. Um, not only just in random pieces, but I can see cutting some of these bees out and adding them to a piece. Very, very cute. And I have a bag of fabric that's all bee and nature, nature inspired. I know. Anyway, thank you, Darlene. I do appreciate it so very much. Everything is great. Yay. <laughs> Now, I wasn't supposed to go out of the house today. I was out for like an hour and a half because they went and picked that up and then I went and did a few other things. And so now I have to catch up. <laughs> All right, that's it for the moment. I'll be back. Oh, if you want to send me happy mail, um, my happy mail address is in the description below. Um, right now, I'm not going over there all the time. I go there maybe once a week-ish. So if you do send me something, if you could send, pop me an email, my email address is also down there and let me know that you sent it. And that way I'll keep an eye on the PO box. Um, right now with the world situation being what it is, I um, am not over there a lot. So anyway, all right, I'll be back.
Okay guys, we're getting ready to go on our evening walk. I spent most of the day slow stitching. You know, when we went to go leave during dinner, we said we should go walking as soon as we're done. It was bright and sunny out. Y'all see that gray cloud? <laughs> so, yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I do have a mask with me, my rescue inhaler. Those that don't know, I'm asthmatic. Anyway, I'm gonna put this on as soon as we get out of the little neighborhood where we're at. And it gets peoply. Uh, anyway, that's it. We'll be back. Hey guys, it is Wednesday afternoon. It's about 3.30. Um, I spent the morning making some fabric buttons out of scraps of fabric, scraps of cotton batting, some embroidery floss, and some washers I stole from my husband's stash in the garage. I will include some pictures here somewhere. Anyway, they were fun to make and I will be making more of them, but I'm going to need some more washers. I think I took all of his. Don't tell him. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is technically still morning. It's 1020. I have my mask, of course. Um, uh, yeah, 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 it's one of the filter masks. I did change out the head loops for ear loops just because if I'm out for any length of time at the shops, um, I start to get a headache. And while the, none of none of it is comfortable, this is more comfortable than the head loops. But the head loops, it's more secure. But you have to decide what's good for you. For right now, I've decided ear loops. Um, I didn't use any extra elastic. I just cut apart the elastic that was already on here. Um, anyway, um, most of the you know time you're spent out at the shops right now, standing in line waiting to get in. Um, <laughs> And yeah, so anyway, so I've got a mask. Um, it's a filter pocket mask, so I've got a filter in there and I'm ready to go. I need to go to the hardware store for parts. At some point, you know, light bulbs die and things like that. And yeah, so anyway, I need to go to the hardware store. So I'm gonna go over to Home Depot, stand in line, wait to get in, get my stuff that I need. I'm While I'm there, I'm gonna get some more washers to make buttons and I'm gonna get some um, vegetable seeds and some things that I've been wanting but I didn't want to go there just for that and hello corona here that's my natural color just FYI right there I'm very very silver so my natural color is very dark was very dark brown so this silver gray really kind of shows up and actually it with the brown it kind of looks like a mousy silver I don't know. It's. I wish it was pure white, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, I'll be back. Oh, talking to the camera, it's not on. Uh, I would bring, blame that on Corona Brain, except that that's something I kind of have done before coronavirus. So um, I probably won't be back to the hardware store for a while. I was a bit disappointed. I was trying hard to maintain social distance and I still got yelled at by another customer in the store because she thought I wasn't maintaining social distance and I was in her way. I think she was just more not sure where I was going and she kept trying to go around me and I wasn't sure what she was doing and confusion, you know? Anyway, um, and yes, I'm scratching my face but I've already sanitized my hands. Um, what really disappointed me though was not only were at least half if not more of the customers without a mask on, which I find disappointing, and purposefully not maintaining social distance, unlike my accident, at least half the employees if not more. <coughs> Allergies, sorry. Um, at least half the employees if not more were not, uh, were not covered and we're not maintaining social distance and we're not caring and the store wasn't limiting how many people could come in or, or anything and while I understand we might be lifting some restrictions that doesn't mean we can lift them all and we should be still being cautious and I yeah I just don't get it I don't get it yeah I want to say personally as I find out about businesses that are not taking precautions to prevent further spread of coronavirus 
whether we're still in lockdown or not. Um, they probably won't be the ones that will get my business often because unless I need something that no one else carries, I'll be shopping other places. We do have, for instance, a grocery store chain here called New Seasons, and they are requiring everyone to wear a mask before they come in, for instance. Um, unless they have a medical reason not to, they need to have a mask on. So, um, uh, employees and customers alike. So, yeah, I, I think I'm going to be following those guidelines more often than not. Um, so I'm not okay with not only not getting sick, but not, I'm not okay with helping spread the virus. So, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Fred. Hi, Fred. Hey, guys. It's um, just before 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon, and I'm going to go get the mail. I uh, spent the most of the day not only doing some slow stitching, but working on the Etsy shop. Pretty much nothing else. I did sleep in this morning for the first time in a long time. Um, can't say I'm upset about that. Um... Because, you know, haven't been sleeping well. Yeah, it goes with the whole menopause and stress thing. <laughs> um, tonight, we're going over to dinner at the kids' new house. Uh, for the first time in a very long time, we have been ha doing Friday night dinners with our daughter and her fiancé almost since they met. And for years, other than when they moved up here before we got here. Um, it was always at our house. Now they have their own house and it's gonna be at their house, I think more often than not going forward. So that's pretty exciting, I think. All right, so to my surprise, I got all the basics of the new slow stitch um, done. I'm working on another spool piece that's going to be on one of the spools that Fred made. No way. Yes way. Uh, anyway, I got all the basic parts, the background all stitched down. So I'll put a picture of it here tomorrow um, or whenever I have time, I'll start adding bits and pieces to it. Now we're going to go have our first ever family night dinner at the kids' house. I don't think we've ever done that before, nope. even when they were in an apartment. No, we never did that. Yeah, so. And I think like the first time in like 20 years or something, we're not having pizza on Friday. You okay with that, Fred? Yeah, we're fine with that. So it's we're, it's been long enough. We're having Mexican food, we're, I guess, because it was Cinco de Mayo on Tuesday. Probably, yeah. We're having burritos. So, daughter's cooking. She's a good cook, too, so I'm good with that. All right, I'll be back. Hey guys, it is um, 3.12 p.m. Saturday, May 9th. I only know that because I'm at the desk looking at the computer. 
I was listening to Pandora, Stray Cats is on right now. I'm doing some more slow stitching, of course. I'm actually working on um, adding some hexagons to my current slow stitch. Um, try, I would say practicing, trying for the first time um, English paper piecing and it, um, using uh, getting this sort of honeycomb pattern. I set up a file with my silhouette this morning to cut out a bunch of paper hexagons that I can use for patterns out of cardstock. And that took quite a bit of time, but I'm glad I did it because they're very precisely cut and I've got a whole bunch of them. Um, and if you do it right, um, you can use the patterns over and over again. I'm gonna link a video by Tula Pink uh, in the description below, she has, um, she's a quilter and she does a lot of uh, paper piecing and um, I, she has a couple of really good videos. So I'll link hers down below if you wanna see how I'm doing this cause it's not my technique, it's hers. Um, but anyway, I'm just working on that and getting the pieces sewn and attached to my new piece that I'm working on, this one. Hey guys, we are out walking. I don't think it's five o'clock yet. Is it? It's, uh, no, it's 20 after 5. Oh, well. We left the house before 5. Getting our walk in a little bit early. 85 degrees out. It's 85 degrees. It's war too warm for me. Fred's loving it. Um, it's a bit warm. It's nice. It's very warm for this thing. When people aren't around, I take it off. Right now, it's kind of people-y. Anyway. We're doing our due diligence and getting some exercise and vitamin D. What about you? It's been a fun week. I'm gonna go back and have dinner after this and continue on some slow stitching. I'll put a picture here somewhere. I'm loving paper piecing. Holy cow, that's a problem. <laughs> I do did come up with the hexagon silhouette cutting file to create a bunch of little hexagons that fit on these spool projects. Um, if you guys want the file, let me know. Anyway, I hope you have a good week, have had a good week. And uh, don't forget to check the video description for relevant links and ways to support the free content here on YouTube. I'm not the only creative person on YouTube or the Facebook art groups that have ways to support. So check out their video descriptions. If you can't find what you're looking for, ask. But all of us who have free art content on the internet have some way to support, whether it's an Etsy shop or PayPal tip jar or whatever. Anyway, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.